I was trying out some Acro Rogue recently. This is Kreas build of Acro Rogue. It's still working process. Acro has not been fine-tuned yet. And it's mediocre right now, I have to say. But the archetype is promising. I believe that once every card is optimized, this will actually be a good archetype. I played a bunch with this, having this double weapon, the Skimitar and Waggle pick. That's just a pretty fun thing to do. Smend in the face and Kreas build features Bloodsay Raiders, which are extremely fun cards in Agro, by the way. Often coming out as six trees and, well, that's a big minion and it's going to face. The deck could still do with some improvements. In particular, I think Edwin probably doesn't have a place in this deck. I would put in another Sap or another SI7 agent, probably as the next move. But other than that, if you would like to play aggressive rogue decks, here's one option. Just hitting face a lot, having a lot of burst, having Myra's unstable element, draw your deck, get resources, find lethal. A pretty fun deck to play overall. So let's go take a look at it in action. Probably a Highlander Hunter, which means secrets. I think I'm keeping just a miscreant. Let's try with this approach here. Alright, hunt to get two cards. Mm, Shimmerfly, okay. I will play the Pharaoh Cat. Ooh, well that's a high roll. Restless Mummy. Oh boy. I'm still going to coin the miscreant, right? For the luckies, yeah. And I think I will take the trade there. Hold on the backstab. He plays like Animal Companion. Backstab can help. Sneep Snapperino. Whoa. That's a surprise. So I could obviously still backstab. It's a way for me to clean it up with skim it. To actually backstab heat. Yeah. I'm going to clean that up. I think that's going to be fine. Starting with the backstab here. I'm trading in the cat there. And then I'm going to dagger there. Trade there. And use one witchy lucky to turn this into a four drop. And from here, next, we're going to try to start pushing, I believe. Yeah, he's playing low tempo now. We're going to start pushing. What is the best way to push? Probably the Hench Clan Tug. That would float a point of mana. Alternatives. So many and I could use the Witchy Lucky. Then it will be difficult for me to activate the hook skimeta combo later. And I don't really want to turn this into a 5 drop. This seems like a decent 4 drop at the moment. That held is good there. So I think I will choose to float one mana now. Let's float one mana this turn. Let's try this. Cut rank 2 with aggro shaman. Yeah, Agro Shaman is pretty solid. I mean, you can kill mages before they can stabilize. Warrior can be a little harsh, of course. It's always a little harsh. But yeah, the meta isn't that fast. So Agro Shaman... Agro Shaman can get under quite a few decks at the moment. I believe in Agro Shaman too. But mage still... Mage has never been about going to fatigue anyway. So you don't have to have the time to go to your combo against mage necessarily. And same with hunt. So they might just be able to kill you before you get to the combo. That's going to be an interesting one. I think we're headed towards the phase. See what happens. Okay, so pressure plate, rat trap, snipe or snakes. But I want to get the hooked skimitar going. What if it's a rat trap? I don't want to modify this. Do I want to proc a rat trap or not? 
I can use Witchy Lucky on the other Lucky. So not a snipe. Pressure plate rat trap snake trap. I don't want to activate a pressure plate here. So this is probably just the skimita. Not the spell yet. And just keep pushing. Not the deadly poison because then pressure plate would kill something. But I don't want that to happen. And I also don't want to proc the rat. But I also don't want to proc the snake, so I'm not going to attack into Zepris. He has value in his hand. But does he have the tempo? That's the big question. They could be like Revenge of the Wild. Get the hounds back again. Could be Explosive Trap. Freezing trap, pressure plate, several alternatives. Do I have lethal is the big question, because I have 8 from the weapon. But 8 plus 3 is 11. I have up to 11 from hand. Let's see, go face first. Okay, well this then should be just be lethal, right? There's no way for him to avoid lethal from this position. Now I just play double deadly poison and hit him in the face. Alright, let's see what happens here. Perhaps I just need to hit face more aggressively, even though that... Mm, that was just a hard turn, because percentage-wise I had so many more non-weapon cards in the deck. But... I don't know. Feels bad, man. Micro Mummy! Okay. This is definitely looking like my next turn play. And Luckies can buff these minions. So I believe what I want to do here is to trade that one away. I don't think ha having one damage to the face is more valuable than cleaning that up. So this one is always going to be coin waggle pick. Get the Dread Corsair out there and backstab the 2-2. Two, two. Coin waggle pick, free Dread Corsair, backstab the 2-2. Two, two. I don't want him to have a Lackey because Lackey activates the Wisp. So I think it's correct to trade here. Use the weapon to push face. Because if I leave the lackey up, then that activates the wasp that can deal 3 damage and kill the red corsair. And I don't want him to kill my red corsair. Now he can do it next turn. This one will kill the totem. These are pushing a face. I don't want to bounce these back. He's going to kill them and then I get to bounce the Leroy back. Hi Beirut. Maybe he isn't going to kill them. But then maybe I can find like a Captain Green skin. Cool. I'm just going to punch him in the face a lot here. Almost done with the quest. But he can't activate the hero power and use a life drinker on the same turn yet. I don't have enough mana to sap and Leroy. That's a bit of a downside. So... What What's the Lackey going to be? If there's the Taunt Lackey... But is that ever going to be enough? Because I have Sap. I think we just have this. There's got to be a dead end for him, right? Clear 
Buttons are so squishy. Or maybe it's not. Well, that 214 is interesting, obviously. What if he has a life drinker in hand and he goes to 16? I mean, if I sap this, he can't replay it. Not immediately, anyway. If I push him down to 5, I equip the Skimitar. I don't get to bounce the Leroy, but is that still the way? But what if he has another taunt? This cannot be replayed. I believe this is the way. I can't bounce Leroy, but I have 6 damage from the Skimitar, 6 damage from the Leroy. He can double life drink to go to 11, but I have 12 damage. He can't replay the Taunt, and he doesn't have any lackeys in hand. So with no lackeys in hand, he cannot get reliably get a Taunt minion. And even if he got one taunt minion without healing, well, then yeah, as long as the taunt minion has up to 6 health, I just, just win anyway. I needed to get the weapon out last turn because I wouldn't have enough mana for it this turn. No lucky is in hand, no way to replay the 8 mana taunt. This seems like this is the, this is the right approach. Past turn, past and sap Leroy. I thought past sap Leroy was less reliable in winning than this. Because if he had the life drinker, and I didn't hit last turn, he would have went to 16, and I wouldn't be able to replay the Leroy. I sap, he replays the taunt minion next turn, I don't have lethal with the sap alone, and then I lose the game. So I would have lost the game to a life drinker, if I had passed in order to sap Leroy next turn. Those were like the factors into the decision. I would love to see two saps, but I'm not sure what to take out. I mean, it's like Edwin even useful in this deck. Who knows? Nothing to activate the combos. I think we're going in with the Grand Mummy. Cutting Edwin. I mean, if you're playing aggro, then then I think I think it's perfectly acceptable. I don't think Edwin is absolutely mandatory in, in a pure aggro rogue. Your wish is my well, no way to combo anything. If I just play the Skimitar now, Dread Corsair will cost 2. Then I can play Dread Corsair Blood Cell Raider next turn. I'll probably have to try that. Do I hit all fates or do I trade away the Zepris? I trade away the Zepris to protect the board. Next turn is Dread Corsair and a 4 3 Blood Cell Raider. Now there would be the option to combine one of these with the Evil Miscreant, if I just play a Life Drinker this turn. He has up to 6 mana, with the coin. I will draw something that enables the Miscreant later on. I need to get this stuff on the board. I probably also need to swing with this weapon again. In case I top deck a weapon. I mean, he can coin Blizzard. That would be the best thing he could do. No, coin Reno was even better. I forgot about the Reno. Ouch. I was pretty unlikely that he would have it, but... Yeah. Not looking good at all right now. Oh boy. Oh boy. Reno on 4. 
That was Reno on four. <laughs> Wild growth from... C I mean, he had Cypris and Reno as his opening hand. That is the power of Highlander decks when you get that. This Edwin here. I don't see. See him on seven. But he's one turn ahead. I mean, that was his turn five now. That would be Siamaton six then. I mean, Sap wouldn't do a whole lot here either, but Edwin doesn't do anything here. Edwin needs to be used to activate the Miscreant and hit the Lackeys. One damage to face or kill the Loot Hoarder. I'm never going to get the board back. I still kill the Loot Hoarder. I don't know if one damage to face matters either. I just don't see any out in this game. My calculations are flawless. I get the best deals anywhere. Yeah. Leaves the Edwin up. So he has 9, 10, 14 damage here. Okay. Let's discover a spell first. 3 damage to random and it doesn't really do much here. I suppose Sinister Strike will be better. Into Life Drinker. Edwin needs to go face. I could get another 4 drop on this position. And the Switchy Lucky is never going to do anything after this. I could get a 5 drop. 4 drop is probably better. I think it's useful to even use the Sinister Strike here. But... It's exceedingly difficult to deal the remaining damage. So that's either Ice Barrier or Flame Ward, typically. And I mean, if it's Ice Barrier, then I just don't have it. But he can already start Alex Trazang himself. So now he probably has both Ice Barrier and Flame Ward. So he's at 21. But that is a waggle pick. Here we go. The problem is just that Flame Ward means that Leroy will die. I can't bounce the Leroy. So. Yeah, I can't bounce the Leroy. I would need to find a deck hand. Have the deck hand die first. And a card that defend uh, third secret in the deck. Those are all main deck secrets, right? So this one goes into the counter spell. No counter spell. Then I need to play the Myras. But I can't sap the Kaatut. And I need one deck hand to go face. To proc the flame ward. Do I have what it takes here? What if I sap the Kaatut next turn? What can I do this turn? I can play the deadly poison. Nine plus three, that's twelve damage. I need to sap the card up next turn. Attack face with the South Sea deck and that will die to the flame ward. Or I can die if he has a fireball in that deck. That is not run in any of the any of the meta builds. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show. Please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.